Hello and welcome to Checkpoint on Campus. I'm your host, Jacob Brothers, and joining me as always is the wonderful Erica Sidora. Erica, how's life treating you today? Honestly, it's been pretty good. How is life treating you today, Jacob? Treating me hunky dory. But speaking of more hunky dory, we have this week of Checkpoint on Campus. This week in the queue, we're going to be talking about the Esports Commissioner's Cup. We're going to be talking about Riot donating battle pass sales for the Ukraine issue. We're going to be talking about our preview, 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 review. And we're going to be ending it with the best Mario Kart track and re-entering our lives this week. All of that coming up on Checkpoint on Campus. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Checkpoint on Campus, your place for collegiate esports news. And we are here to talk about the largest ever in-person collegiate esports event that's going to be happening in May. So College Park will be hosting the inaugural Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup, the CECC for short. And it's a multi-game event for esports athletes across the country. And again, it'll be happening at the Gateway Center Arena May 6th through the 8th. So originally it was called the Collegiate Esports National Championship, but it's been rebranded. Last year it was virtual. Now it's going to be physical. And not only physical, but once again, the biggest collegiate physical in-person event, which is pretty sweet. Uh, the event will be uh, – actually, yeah, so more than 300 players and more than 64 esports teams participated last year, and it will be even more this year. The event is in partnership with the Atlanta Hawks, the Atlanta Esports Alliance, and the Collegiate Sports Management Group, and even more. Um, and, yeah, so – Sanctioned by Atlanta Sports, biggest collegiate esports thing in person. And I can't wait to see what happens. We're going to be talking to someone from this organization before the event happens. But again, the event is happening May 6th through the 8th. So if you want to be involved, look it up, sign up, and good luck. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about Riot Games donating money through their battle pass after this. Welcome back once again, friends. Jacob Brothers still here. Erica Sidora is still there. And we all know about the uh, U Ukraine conflict that's been going on around the world. And there are some game developers that have been providing aid and help. And one of those companies is very small indie studio Riot Games. So, Erica, what, what has Riot Games been up to with this situation? So, Riot Games is making an incredible effort to provide relief for Ukraine. They are actually having all Battle Pass sales proceed to Ukraine. And there are also three three humanitarian nonprofits that Riot is also one million dollars to these nonprofits are the International Medical Doctors and the Pol the Polish Red Cross. Excuse me. This was motivated to, of course, help the conflict in Ukraine. But I also wanted to ask you, Jacob, what games would also benefit from helping uh, a, a global conflict like this? Because we haven't seen much of Battle Pass money raising. <laughs> when I came across the story, I was like, oh, that's interesting, and. Uh, it's battle passes through Valorant, Legends of Runeterra, Wild Rift. And so it's cool to see that multiple games under the same roof are using this kind of method to raise money. I think another game that would be really successful with this is Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League is just another game where the battle pass is just so successful and all the cosmetics are really highly sought after. I mean, my, my buddy and I tune in every single day to see what's in the shop. <laughs> and so I, I really hope we get to see more, more of this Battle Pass method in the future because I feel like it works way better than other... Because I know, like, World of Warcraft has been like, hey, if you buy this cat, money will go to Red Cross. And that's really cool, but at the same time, if it's something in the game already of the Battle Pass that people already want to spend their money on, it just makes sense. But speaking of, you know, how is, how is the Ukraine situation impacting esports as a whole? And it's really been through the sanctions. Um, in Fortnite, Russian players are no longer able to win cash prizes. And I know both in CSGO and Valorant, uh, Russian esports organizations are not able to play in them. And that's pretty much impacting Gambit and uh, Virtuous Pro. And so what those two orgs are doing is that they are allowing their teams to play, but they cannot represent the brand in any way. So, for example, the, the Gambit's Valorant team, they will be playing in the upcoming Valorant tournament, but they are no longer under the Gambit banner, and they have this new name. And so it's interesting to see how the global situation is impacting esports, and time will only tell how it's going to further impact esports. And hopefully, eventually, it all turns around. But time will tell. Coming up next, we're going to have our infamous preview review coming up after this. Hello and welcome to your preview, 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 review, review, review. Jacob Brothers is still here. Erica Sador is still there. And we're going to be starting with You Know It, You Love It. Halo. Halo is still going. It's kicking. People are loving it. Wanted to give a shout out to the current 10 and 0 undefeated teams. And those, un yes, that's right. And those universities are University of Tennessee, Knoxville, University of Illinois at Urbana, Ch Urbana Champaign, uh, Buckeye Gaming Collective, and Utah Valley University. I'll also give a little shout-out bonus to Rutgers, who is 10-2, just because of scheduling. 
And you might think, whoa, 10 and 2. It's crazy how just those few teams are so good. No, no, no. There are a ton of 9 and 0 teams. And I think there's even some 8 and 0 teams. So scheduling will have to catch up, but there are probably more than half of these teams that are competitive and look prime and ready for a championship showing. And remember, all these matches are happening on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. CST. Go watch some Halo. Uh, Eric, what's going on in League of Legends? There is so much going on with League, but this week is the most intense proving grounds yet because there were a multitude of upsets that happened, and I don't get upset when I play games or watch games, but it hurts my heart a little bit. Let's start off with 100 Thieves going 1v2 Maryville, which means that 100 Thieves lost against Maryville, which isn't a surprise, but I always upheld um, this academy team to uh, the highest degree, but Maryville has been deadly lately. And then no team going 2v1 against Ginger Turmeric. This led off into the series of Maryville going 0-2 and two against no team, which is a shocker in itself because these Maryville players are intense, but you never expect the, the funny guys from no team to, to really kick it into gear but i really want to shout out no team's jujushka because he is a relentless support if you see him around the rift just know you you won't make it you just won't make it the next game i want to cover is immortals versus winthrop and winthrop lost the series i don't even want to talk about it because it hurt my heart but most the most sad storyline that i want to highlight on is doxa actually playing for Taco Gaming, um, and he actually got to briefly face against his old Winthrop team. And let me say that the technical differences between these two players are very minimal, or these two teams were very minimal, um, but you could kind of see the sentimentality on the Rift a little bit. I guess for me, I did. Um, but Taco Gaming went 2 of VO, um, which leads us into the finals. Um, I'm future casting right now because the games are happening at 3 o'clock, Pacific time at Unified Live's Twitch, but um, my guess is no team wins because this team has incredible rotation, their communication is on point, and when they have an objective, they will carry through. I'm most excited for the CLL playoffs, but these proving grounds have armed, like they've got me at the edge of my seat. Sweet. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the best Mario Kart track re-entering our lives this week, coming up after this. Welcome back for the last time this week of Checkpoint on campus. Jacob Brothers is here and Erica Sidora is there. And we are here to talk about one of the greatest games of all time, which is Mario Kart. So there's been a long drought. I'm a Mario Kart player, competitive. You know, I've made $7, so I'm kind of a big deal. And Dang. I have played, yeah, I know, I know. I've played the same, like, 48 tracks since, like, 2016. And they announced that they're adding another 48 tracks. So they're going to be adding 48 tracks across the next 18 months for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Say that five times really quickly. Um, and the first content drop is happening on March 18th, which is this Friday. And so of the courses being added, there is Paris Promenade, Toad Circus, uh, oh, to Circus, Toad Circuit, uh, Choco Mountain, Coconut Mall, Tokyo Blur, Ninja Hideaway, Shroom Ridge, and Sky Garden. So Erica, I'll ask you first, what is your favorite Mario Kart track? I don't have a favorite Mario track. Oh my, that's embarrassing to say, but I, I'm pretty bad at the game. So well, whatever. Okay. <laughs> well, that's okay, because you can, you can have a brand new one, because Coconut Mall is finally going to be in our arms again. Coconut Mall is far and away the best track added back on the Wii. I mean, the escalators, shortcutting through a store, dodging cars, going off of a ramp at the top of a mall. It literally has it all, and it's actually perfection. And so it was kind of the biggest criticism back in the day of, like, these are good tracks. Eh, some of the Mario Kart 8 tracks weren't that good, but the, the old tracks were good. It's like, why is there no Coconut Mall? We all love Coconut Mall. Where is the best track in Mario Kart? And so now it's finally here. But kind of an area, an interesting area of contention is they are adding some of the mobile game tracks as a part of these <laughs> collections. So Paris Promenade. Uh, Tokyo Blur and Ninja Hideaway are all from Mario Kart Tour. And so there's a lot of people who are worried like, oh, over half of these courses are just going to be these crappy mobile knockoff courses. And it's interesting because the art style kind of backs it up because there are a lot of tracks, or actually all of the new tracks being added is graphically very different from the original courses in the game. Like you can even like look at the trees of the older older tracks versus the trees. Like literally the trees of the trees of the going to be added in Toonie versus realistic. So people are worried that it's just going to be these crappy little ports, which I hope not because I want real Coconut Mall and real Choco <laughs> Mountain. 
So, so time will only tell. But again, that is going to be happening on March 18th. You can actually already preload the courses so that you can wake up and just play the best Mario Kart track in history yet again. Uh, and that's what I will be doing. And I'm actually going to be live on Twitch with that too because it's time for the king to come back. But that this guy plugging it on my own show. What what could I say? Uh, um, but that is our show. Uh, we thank you so much for watching. Uh, for more, check out CheckpointXP.com. We have things going up almost every single day. And remember that we always and forever beyond plus ultra. You're going to see the heart hands. We love you guys. We hope that you have a fantastic week. See you soon.